A point of sale operator say there are plans to sue the Corporate Affairs Commission CAC over mandatory registration requirements. On May the 6th, the CAC and financial technology fintech companies agreed to a two-month timeline to register their agents, merchants, and individuals with the Commission. Now, the CAC said the deadline for the registration is set for July the 7th. According to the Commission, the action is equally backed by Section 863, Subsection 1 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, as well as the 2013 Central Bank of Nigeria Guidelines on Agent Banking. Now, the president of the Association of Mobile, Mobile Money or Bank Agents in Nigeria, Amban, Pasasi Sharafadin, voted the directive mandating the POS operators to register with the CAC, saying the move had forced the association to go to court to seek a redress. Now, Sharafadin asserted that the directive from the CAC violated the provision of the Companies and Allied Matters Act laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, which explicitly uh, states that the Commission has no jurisdiction over individuals not operating as a company. He noted that sub-agents are independent branches of a company already registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission. Now, today on the show, we'll keep our eye on recent development on agency banking and POS operators in Nigeria. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Let's continue with our main discussion now. The Registrar General of the CAC, Husseini Magaji, revealed in a statement released by the Commission that the recent development involved reaching an agreement with the POS operators following a meeting in Abuja. He emphasized that the registration process aligns with legal requirements and the directives of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Magaji clarified that the registration timeline was not aimed at specific groups or individuals, but rather focused on safeguarding businesses. He highlighted that the initiative is supported by Section 863, Subsection 1 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Kama of 2020, as well as the 2013 CBN Guidelines on Agent Banking. So right now, I am being joined by the Vice President of the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria, Amban, Dr. Obioha Oti, to delve deeper into this matter. Good morning to you, Dr. Oti. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Good morning, and thank you for having me. It is indeed a pleasure. Let's try and grasp uh, a bit of what's really going on with the entire development now with the CAC and the you know, registration of POS um, agents. Now, Amban is saying that they are headed for the court you know, because of uh, this recent uh, directive. But from what we understand, from statements that we read, uh, the CAC said it was actually agreed upon at a meeting in Abuja. What is the true picture? Um, I, I don't know exactly the meeting that you are referring to, uh, that was there in Abuja where this agreement was met, but I'm just, uh, sure that many of us in Ambam, including our president, uh, Mr. Pasasi Sarafadin, we are all surprised when the news broke that uh, every of our members must register with the CAC uh, in order to continue operating. So um, we, are, we are surprised that that happened. And just like you rightly said, we are ready to do everything we can to make sure that uh, we counter that because we believe strongly that it is not in line with the agent banking regulation from CBN and the, even the uh, karma that you mentioned, I will, which I will uh, read out to you in due course. We believe that that directive runs also contrary to it. Thank you. Okay, let me try and understand your point of view. You're talking about uh, you know the uh, what is contained in uh, the guidelines from the CBN. Uh, the CAC is saying something else, that the action is backed by Section 863, Subsection 1 of CAMA and the 2013 Central Bank of Nigeria Guidelines. What are uh, these guidelines that the CBN uh, you know, has put in, or have put in place right now you know, for 
for POSM operations. Uh, can you just uh, run it through us so we can actually get a bit of clarity here? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let's start from the Company and Allied Matters Act that uh, you said the CAC quoted. Um, at least on my desk here, let me get, go direct to that page. You mentioned uh, section 863. Let's read it and see what exactly is there. It says, a person or association of persons shall not carry on business in Nigeria as a company limited liability partnership, limited partnership or under a business name without being registered under this act. So what this is actually talking about is that people or persons should not carry out businesses like companies. They should not carry out businesses. Let's look at it very well. A person or association of persons shall not carry on businesses in Nigeria as a company. As a company, limited liability, partnership, limited partnership. So um, we are not contesting that. We are not contesting that because the camera says that people should not carry on businesses as companies without prior registering with the um, CSC. That is very clear. Most of our agents are not operating as companies. They are operating as individuals. And the agency banking regulation from the CBN allows individuals to register and operate as agents under financial institutions. Okay, let, let's even go to the agency banking regulation. If you look at uh, section 6.1 that talks about agent eligibility, let's look at uh, uh, read it together. Um, it says, Individuals and entities who wish to act as agents of financial institutions shall be required to meet the following eligibility conditions. Okay, so if you go down, you see all the conditions that is referring to. So the, this regulation recognizes agents that are operating as individuals, individuals, not as companies. We have agents that operate as companies. Myself, I operate as a company and I'm duly registered with the CAC. Mm. There are so many other agents in that category, especially when you get to the aggregator category of agents. Everyone at that level operates as a company. But there are several other individuals who are even more in number that operate individual at, at the individual level, just like every other businesses in, in Nigeria. For instance, you have the Accra seller, somebody who is selling Accra by the roadside. You have somebody who is selling provision. You have somebody who is selling uh, small, small things like that. And most of these people, their total capital may not even be up to 50,000. Some of them, 20,000, they are just rec recycling their capital to enable them to continue to be in business. So these are the people that we are talking about. They are not operating as companies and they don't intend to op operate as companies even in the nearest future so right. both the companies and ally matters act and the agency banking regulation recognizes that individuals can carry on their normal businesses and these uh, set of people are the people we are saying that the cac should let alone to mm. carry on their businesses the way they have been carrying it so right. if they decide maybe in future to register as companies then they can now go to the CAC. But right now, CAC has no jurisdiction over them. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's even delve uh, into why the CAC and um, the, uh, the so-called uh, the CBN guidelines uh, 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 have actually been brought uh, to the fore right now. According to the CAC, it's a saying that uh, this particular move it will help stem the issue of... Uh, uh, aside from infractions, issue of security, kidnapping, and all that that we've had over time. I'm also aware that um, the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria recently launched a joint security task force. So where do you find a middle ground in all of this? Okay, um, thank you. Uh, I'm happy you were uh, right there during the time we launched this. And then... Um, you can tell very well um, about some of the things we talked about. 
Now, let's even start from the reason behind the mandatory CAC registration by all agents, including mm. those operating as individuals. Now, you said um, it will help to um, curb some infractions and the malpractices, and you mentioned fraud and, and so on. I listened to your news right now, and uh, where we were really not all the uh, malpractices and all the um, negative consequences of certain people uh, are masquerading as uh, POS operators and causing um, a lot of um, infractions in the society. We are aware of that. And that was why um, our president, uh, Mr. Fasasi Sarafadin, and the rest of us who are members of the NEC, um, came up with the idea of the Joint Tax Force because we want to, as much as possible, find a way to you know, sanitize our industry. You know, we have a lot of situations where we see things that are happening contrary to the, um, the practices that we know should be the case. People, for instance, um, hawk POS. You see them on the road. They are running after vehicles, uh, trying to get customers to patronize them. That is strong. Because the agency banking regulation that I just read out a section there says that a, a POS operator or an agent banker should have a recognizable um, address, should be in a particular location where you can always find them. You see, there are so many other things that people are doing that run contrary to the rules and regulations. Now, CAC registration or mandatory CAC registration is not going to solve that. Even the case of fraud, the case of kidnapping, the case of um, so many uh, issues like that, we are aware of that. That was why we came up with the idea of joint tax force. Recently, um, we were in Abuja for uh, a symposium on economic and financial in inclusion. Our association, we are fully represented. I was there myself. And the issue equally came up when the vice president asked us what we are doing about that. Mr. Our president, uh, Mr. Fasasi, explained clearly our position on that. He explained our collaboration with the police, the civil defense, the DSS, the EFCC, and the relevant law enforcement agencies. We are trying our best to work with them so that we provide the necessary intelligent information and the collaboration to be able to deal with this. I think that is the way the government should go, mm. not mandating every POS operator to register with CAC. Okay, now, I work in the bank myself for many years. I know that the quantum of fraud that emanated from uh, CAC registered corporate entities is very high. That registration has uh, I've not in any way uh, helped to prevent fraud. You understand? So these are the reasons why we are saying that our members should not be compared to register with CAC under any condition. Okay, uh, moving on right now. So, uh, uh, points noted. But let's really talk about the effectiveness and um, what has been on so far since uh, the uh, the launch of the agent uh, joint task force in April. Uh, it's about a month right now. So far, what changes uh, have been made and uh, what's the situation like right now since the launch? Okay, yeah, that launch is just the initial awareness that we want to create. We've really not done much because we are still trying to um, seek uh, collaboration with the necessary law enforcement agents. We've not actually um, rolled out the tax force across the 36 states and uh, the FCFCT. Though some of our state chapters, you know, are engaged with activities at enlightening the public force because we are not going to directly come out in full force to enforce but we have to enlighten them we have to do the necessary advocacy that is involved we have to do the necessary training that is involved across um, our membership including those that have uh, refused to identify with us we are trying as much as possible since we are operating within the same industry to enlighten them so that they understand what actually is going on. And by so doing, the bad name that um, the society generally gives um, agent bankers or um, POS operators at least will reduce. 
and we want to make sure that as much as possible, as much as we can, we we'll make sure that the industry is sanitized and all the um, elements that cause problems within our industry, we're able to fish them out and hand them to the necessary law enforcement agents to take care of them. So uh, for now, mm. we've, we've not fully come out, but we are still seeking. Just recently, um, some of our state chapters, for instance, here in Lagos, we went to the um, different law enforcement agents, you know, to really make sure that they join us in our in our move, you know, to to make sure that this joint tax force succeeds. All right, fine. Uh, as we round off now, I'm also aware that um, Amber has actually been. Uh, closely involved in the financial inclusion and policy of the federal government and uh, the last time uh, you guys were at uh, Nasagawa and you uh, you you launched the NFI neighborhood financial inclusion center so can you give me an update uh, of all of that as we round off okay thank you so much i'm really happy and i appreciate you for bringing up the issue of the neighborhood financial inclusion centers so that is uh, the vision of uh, Mr. President Fasasi uh, Rafadin. So he shared this vision. And uh, the reason behind it actually was because of the challenges a lot of people were encountering uh, to register BVN, to register NIN, and uh, some other services that will really deepen financial inclusion. Yeah, if you recall, I think your uh, station gave um, a report, a very, a very, very disturbing report about uh, people that want to do NIN uh, because they, uh, they, they wanted to register for JAM. I think it was before JAM. Mm. And in fact, we saw the uh, confusion that happened in that very place. Yeah. So that is exactly the picture all over the country. And it has not ended. So in our wisdom, and uh, Mr. President decided that um, Amban as an association can do something because we have the membership across the country. I don't think there is any uh, industry association that has more members than uh, mobile money and bank agents that is scattered all over the country. Mm. And if we are giving the necessary encouragement and enablement right. by the necessary people that are supposed to help us we should be able to bring these services closer to the people, right from the villages, the communities, the wards, the local government, okay. up to the state and the national level. All right. so that was the vision behind the NFIC. All right, thank you, Dr. Um, Obioha Oti. That as much as we can take. Uh, we uh, wish you all the best and we'll follow um, the progress as regards uh, the POS registration with the CAC. And um, of course, we'll keep our viewers informed as, as per the, the latest news. We want to say a big thank you for, to you for joining us uh, today on the show. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm happy that you gave me the opportunity. All right, and that's uh, the size of the show for today. I have been speaking with the Vice President of the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria, Amber. My name is Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.